everyone, welcome to Scrapbook Process video number 99. For this layout, I'm using Prima Marketing Flirty Fleur collection, a collection that I just, oh, it's just me all over. It's mint, it's black and white, it's little birdies, it's florals, it's foiled, it's just, mmm, yum. But I'm also setting myself a little bit of a challenge with this layout in that I am scrapbooking an enormous photo. My usual style is I quite like to scrapbook small-ish photos. I really don't like using standard sizes like four by six and stuff i just i find them too big and cumbersome and i just i don't like scrapping with them so using something as big as this was yeah quite a challenge for me i did measure it it was something like nine and a half by seven ish that kind of size so yes i'll talk about like what's in the photo a little bit later on but just to start off with what i'm doing here i haven't prepped this paper with gesso i am going to do a little bit of mixed media not loads um but prima marketing paper is quite like it's almost a little bit prepped for mixed media because they are a mixed media-ish brand so like the paper if it was something like say an american crafts paper i would have put a layer of clear gesso on but i didn't need to do it with this and yeah i'm only doing light mixed media so i started off i just marked roughly where the photo was going to go and then i did some stamping with that kaiser craft brick uh stamp um using stays on stone gray ink in the collection a lot of the black that's in it is kind of quite faded and distressed and looks a little bit more dark gray so using that stone gray ink worked really well sort of to match the overall theme and then i just as you saw trimmed down my photo and i'm just going to back it here i was torn between using the mint side of that paper and bringing in a bit more of the mint color to the layout but then i just thought that one with the really distressed black and white stripe just you know it just suited it better it just you know it felt right to use that one and obviously because it's quite a big photo i am going to just gut um that piece of paper i've cut to back the photo because like that would be a big big giant piece of quite expensive prima marketing paper being kind of wasted so i gutted that and then i'm just sticking my photo on like so i did distress the edges of the photo and i'm going to distress the edges of the backing as well so once i have done that i know i'm not going to stick it down just yet i'm going to add some washi tape so i do have the washi tape set that comes with this collection i don't usually buy the washi tape sets especially with prima collections because you know we all know prima marketing isn't the cheapest or most budget of brands but this collection just i had to have all of the things so i am taking the washi and tearing it up in various ways like tearing it up the middle as well so it's not as wide and just doing i think three or four little areas of all this torn up bits of washi tape just adding a little more interest and stuff going on to the layout and I did that for quite some time I think I have cut a little bit of it out some of the washi tape is foiled as well so you get more of that hollow foil in there so yes I mean obviously the background is very foiled in general so I didn't need to worry too much about adding more of that because yeah there's quite a lot there but anyways once my washi tape was down i'm gonna add my oh i'm flipping in between different tenses there i'm going present tense past tense i'm so sorry about that that's the kind of thing that would annoy me so i apologize anywho i'm sticking down my photo just there and then i'm gonna do my other little bit of mixed media here i'm taking this brick stencil or it's more like like stone brickwork kind of thing stencil and using prima paper paste with that and when i first do it you you may be thinking grace that looks horrendous what are you doing but just 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 stick with me on this there is a method to my madness i knew it would look a bit stark shall we say at this point like it is very very white against those backgrounds but yes i'm just going to do that in three areas um going both over the background and over the photo so just a little bit more up in this top right corner there then i dried that completely made sure it was you know completely bone dry before i started coloring it with some distress oxides to take away that really stark whiteness and it made it look a little bit more like natural stone i started off with using uh pumice stone but that wasn't quite right there's like a a slight beigeish brownish hint to that color which was not matching the background at all um because it's very black and white kind of thing so i went in with the weathered wood and that worked a lot better because 
there is like a blue tinge to this particular grey but that worked because of the mint uh, with the layout as well so or with the collection or whatever so that worked a lot better but I also wanted to bring in just a little bit more mint so I'm using my Kurataki watercolours and just the mint colour there and just adding little blobs of mint on that stenciling and then I'm going to let it sort of drip um, over the stenciling kind of thing. I did reach to use a ink mist spray kind of thing for this but then I realised I don't actually have a mint spray. I know right can you believe it I just I don't have that kind of right mint colour. I do have the Heidi Swap um, mint but hers is more of a mint like the colour of a mint leaf kind of thing. It's quite a dark green it's not the kind of mint that you think about when you I'm saying the word mint too much aren't I I'm gonna try and stop that anyways with all of that dry I am gonna just chop out a couple of these little sort of two by two little squares these are from the paper pad I've got one that says dance one that says beautiful and one that says what does it say it says confidence is the best outfit rocket own it I think that's what it says um with them just like that they were a little too big so I'm going to carefully tear about uh, half a centimeter or so off the edges of those and kind of do them so they're not perfectly square kind of thing and that just looks better for the overall aesthetic of the um of the layout as well and then going around the edges of those with the weatherwood distress oxide as well just so it all ties in together like so now i do have lots of embellishments from this collection including two packs of those tiny little flowers because a very good friend got me the pack of flowers uh, for christmas as well she was like i know you've probably got them already but i also know that you won't mind having two packs and she was quite right about that so yes i'm just going through ephemera and stickers and flowers and stuff and choosing which bits to use um i yes yeah, so i'm just playing around with the flowers here i think i use five or six over the whole layout i've got some floral ephemera pieces as well decided very much no on that striped uh, flower there i mean they're lovely and i'm sure they would go beautifully on another layout but they just did not look right on this one um, cutting that ephemera piece in half there because I was going to tuck it behind the photo anyway so there's no need to you know waste half of it for you know putting it under the photo and then just kind of start sticking stuff down really I did start off using my usual tacky glue that's the Nuvo stuff I thought it would be okay on top of the the paper paste but it turns out not so much so I did have to go back and re-glue that a little bit later um I think I had got my glossy accents out to use for the florals and started putting those down then just well, I'm just gonna have to go back over everything and use the glossy accents for all of the things because they were popping up you can see I've put my jar of paper texture paste there to kind of try and you know hold stuff down until it dries um so yes i'm gonna add a load of phrases up the side there i think i've got love this uh, perfect day and something else along those lines the photo by the way should probably just say what it is this is an old picture this is from my eldest sister's wedding all the way back in 2000 and there on the right side of the screen at the moment is little 10 year old me and also my cousin as well I would have been 10 and she would have been 12 and we're just prancing around in our bridesmaids dresses because we loved those dresses so so much they were lilac and beautiful and puffy and we just thought they were fabulous my phone is on screen by the way also to hold something down while it dried um <laughs> just it was the first thing i grabbed that was vaguely heavy um i also like in this photo you can see there's like three people in the background and when you probably can't see on screen but when you can see it in real life um they're actually looking at us and kind of laughing and stuff not laughing at us but laughing with us kind of thing which is really nice so i didn't want to cover those guys up because i just like that little aspect of the photo um it doesn't really have one particular title it just kind of has those those three cards that are around it and I put fearless up the side of that thing that says confidence is the best outfit because I think that's quite nice to have against this photo especially when you're that age and in a pretty dress you're so confident and happy and stuff so I thought that fitted quite well um I am writing the date with a white I think that's a unibal signo but it's not the broad one it's the the slimmer nib gel pen um, just writing the date there and it does work fine you just need to not touch it for a good hour or so for it to dry on that glossy surface and then I'm adding lots of splatters surprise surprise um, my black splatters are dilutions in slate gray I have said this many times before but when I want to add black splatters I use the slate gray because 
actual black is usually, not always, but usually too harsh. And the slate grey is just perfect. It looks black, but it's not. And then I'm adding white splatters actually onto the photo, which I just... Just an idea I randomly had at the end and thought it actually worked quite well and I'm really happy with how that turned out. Obviously some black ended on the photo and some white ended up on the layout kind of thing. They're not all perfect but for the most part it's white on the photo, black on the rest of the layout. So I think that is pretty much the last thing I do. Yes, yes it is. So there we go. Thank you so so much for watching this video everyone. Um, pre This collection came out I don't know sometime last year I will try and find as many links as I can to it to help you out so do check out the description box for all that kind of information please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video chat to me in the comments and yeah okay I'm done thank you so much again bye bye